Right, so we look at rates of change. We've, we've looked very specifically at average rates of change at this point in time. So we pick two points, we look at the change in Y and the change in X, get the gradient from there. Cool? Um, valuable, there is a value in that, but it's pretty basic and it doesn't, um, doesn't always help us. And for um, senior maths, it's got very, very few um, very few applications, whereas the instantaneous rate of change is much more valuable. So when we want to deal with the rate of change at a specific point or a specific time, we need to use an instantaneous rate of change, not our average rate of change. If you need an example that helps think about that, when I'm driving along and I look down at my speedo, that's my instantaneous rate of change. So that tells me what speed the car is travelling at that point in time. Happy with that? the police are very concerned with your instantaneous rate of change. They're not as concerned with your average rate of change, which is, say I travel 300 kilometers in three hours, my average rate of change is 100 kilometers an hour. Cool. Note that for those of us driving in New South Wales, they also have average speed cameras. Cool, so they just set up along the highway and they pick up your car every hour or so and so you've been speeding because you travelled 120 kilometres in that hour. So speed cameras all over the place, but more often than not, the average speed camera is dealing with the instantaneous rate of change. Cool. Um, so to represent this graphically, we use a thing called a tangent. A tangent is a line, and my description here is not very good, but I'll, it'll get better once you see. It's a line that doesn't cut the function, but it gets as close as it possibly can. So it's supposed to represent the gradient or the, the the rate of change of our function at this point in time. So if I was to draw a tangent here, I want it to get as close to this function as possible without cutting it. So you see that it goes along the edge, it doesn't quite cut it. Now that doesn't mean that it won't cut it later on, but I'm talking about at this specific point here, the function does not get cut by my tangent. Cool? And we'll use this as an example here, because you can very clearly see that this function does cut my tangent later on, but that's still the tangent of that line because around this point here, it just touches but it doesn't cross. Cool? Does that make sense? Yes or no? Happy with that? The gradient of the tangent, so the gradient of this line here, if I just, I'm just going to get rid of one of these lines so I'm not confusing you. The gradient of my red line, say this is at the point five seconds, the gradient of my red line will tell me my instantaneous rate of change at five seconds. Does that make sense? So how much is this function changing at five seconds? And let's say this function, this value here was six, and we'll go seven, and we'll call this four, and we'll call that, I don't know, three. Tell me what the gradient of that, what's my instantaneous rate of change? How would I calculate my instantaneous rate of change? So? M equals what? Rise out of run. What's my rise? Four over. Which equals? Two. My gradient there, my instantaneous rate of change is two. Cool. Happy with that? What I want us to do now is to, with as, it doesn't need to be precise, but I want us to sketch what the tangents of those functions look like. So this function here, there's three orange dots on the board. I want you to sketch the tangents at that, those points. I'll give you 30 seconds to do so. Your graph doesn't need to be precise, it just needs to be about the same. Any adjustments? 
No, you're happy with that? Yeah. I'll probably go a little bit with that one, but that's okay. So your tangent should look something like that. Yeah. I actually think yours was better after looking at mine. That's not that good. Anyway, two, tell me when to stop. Thanks, Mackenzie. Thanks, Curtis. 